so now our background is created. We can go back to the layers, and eventually we're going to want to put some text on here somewhere. So if you select the type tool, you can left click and drag out our text box. If you're ready to start typing, you can do so there. The cursor changes to blinking cursor, and you can type in text. At this point, if you want to change the font size or the font type, you can highlight the text, click on the font button, and we'll change this font just as an example to 18 points. All right, so notice that the font got bigger. Now, one great option about InDesign is that if you already have the text uh, located in a Word document or another word processing document, you don't have to retype it. You can do sort of a copy and paste, although it works a little bit differently in InDesign. Let's see how that works. Click on File, Place, and locate the Word document that you want to use. In this example, we have a Word document called Beach. Click Open. and the text field that you created, the text frame, gets populated with the text from the Word document. You can resize the frame if you like by clicking on the frame and it should bring up some handles. You can drag those to whatever side you like. You can also adjust the size of the frame by right clicking on it, choose fitting, and fit frame to content. And that makes the frame just large enough so that all the text fits with, within it. So now it's time to add some images. If you go to the Rectangle Frame tool, left click on it and hold down, you'll notice you can also create uh, an ellipse frame or a polygon frame. So for now we're just going to do the rectangle. And I know that eventually I'm going to have four frames uh, to hold the four images that I want in this document. So let's draw out a couple of frames. We'll have one, two, three and four. So you can kind of see how InDesign works a bit differently from Word in that you can lay out how your content's going to look before you actually put any content into your document. So you can move these frames around uh, long before you ever actually put any images into them. Now one great feature of InDesign, just as you did the file place the text from a Word document, you can place multiple images into your document at one time instead of having to copy and paste each one individually. Uh, if you'd like, you can use file and place, but we're going to use Adobe Bridge for this. So click the bridge icon in the upper right hand corner of InDesign. All right, and if you're not familiar with Bridge, it's basically just a, a kind of a helper application that allows you to get more details whenever you're browsing for files. It's, uh, it's an alternative to using Windows Explorer to, to find things. Uh, you don't have to switch into a thumbnail view or anything special to see what it is that you're looking for. Here it's pretty clear that we've got our four images that we want to use. If you need to get more details, say you have images that look similar and uh, you need to zoom into them, you can select the image and look down towards the bottom and there's a slider that will zoom into the pictures. This all is directly within Bridge. You can't do this in Windows Explorer. So I want to use all four of these. I will left click and drag to highlight all four of them. And then click on one. Uh, hold down and left click on, on one of the pictures. Drag down and your cursor looks like it kind of has a deck of cards attached to it. Drag that all the way down to InDesign CS3. Back into InDesign and then let go. Your cursor now has uh, one of the images attached to it, along with the number four in parentheses. And the four means that all four of those are tied to your cursor. So each time you click, it's going to place one of those pictures. So I'm going to place the first picture by left clicking in this frame. Then the next picture we'll place in this frame. And continue until all four frames are filled. So that's a very quick way to put images into your document. Say you have 10 or 15 pictures you want to use in a particular handout, you can draw all the frames out first and then place, uh, you know, just kind of plug in each one of your pictures uh, however you see fit without having to go back and 
copy and paste each one individually. Now three of these pictures filled up the frames pretty nicely, but one of them, it seems like the picture was a little bit too big for the frame. So we can fix that just as we did with the text. If you right click, choose fitting, you have fit content to frame in which uh, the actual picture will shrink to fit inside the frame. You can fit the frame to the content in which the frame will grow larger in this case to hold the entire picture. And what we're going to choose for this one is to fit the content proportionally, which means the picture is going to shrink, but it's going to stay into proportion. So there's our picture. So we now have these four images, text, and a background. Um, these are the basic components that will make up probably most of the documents that you work with. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at are how these layers actually affect what it is that you see on the screen. Now you can see that the text layer is above the images layer. So if I grab one of these images and I move it to where it kind of overlaps this text box, I can still see the text above the image because the text layer is above the images layer. If I were to left click and drag this images layer above the text layer, that portion of the text is covered by this picture because the layer is above the text layer. The image layer is above the text layer. So the order of the layers here is the viewing order that you see on the document. That is a very basic um, explanation of how layers works and it can be pretty important whenever you start getting a whole bunch of uh, different types of images and text and other components into your document. And actually the very last thing we're going to look at is how to save and uh, export your InDesign documents. Most people won't be able to open an InDesign document unless they have InDesign, so you'll have to put it in a format that they can read. First thing you want to do is save your InDesign document in case you need to come back and work on it later. So just as with any other program, go to File, Save, and I'm going to locate the folder that we've been using for InDesign here, the InDesign Tutorial, and I'm going to call this one Practice. and save it. So now you can always come back in InDesign and edit this however you need to. But if you want somebody to be able to view your finished product, you can convert this to Adobe PDF also. For that, there's not a, a specific PDF button like you would see in Word. What you have to do is go to File, Print, and then where you have your printer option, click on the drop down arrow and there's Adobe PDF. So from this point you can just click print and it will convert your InDesign document into a PDF that can be shared and uh, viewable by anyone that's visiting your site. That's going to wrap up this uh, InDesign basic tutorial. You will be able to find more resources for InDesign in the WebCT uh, week module for advanced technologies. You'll be able to find more resources for InDesign in the weekly module for advanced technologies.